But you know, last time you were here, you uh-huh. were in a relationship. You had a uh, a, a reel that went viral on this show, and okay. people really loved what you were saying. And one of the things you said in it was, "Until you never experienced a nigga try." I have never experienced until being with. I have never experienced a nigga try. That's a never one, not one. Never. It's true. And then I experienced a nigga stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> And I know niggas is in the comments right now, like, see, that's why she's single. And it's like, yeah, that is exactly why I'm single. Because we live in a society that hasn't caught up to women like me. As black people, like, we just aren't really taught how to love ourselves. Like, we don't even know what that looks like a lot of times. Like, I think so many of us are in that process on a regular basis. Like, what does that actually mean? Like, why can't we support each other and know that you have your strengths and I have my strengths? Like, your dick and balls does not give you <laughs> leadership skills. The idea that you would trust someone to birth the baby that you would give everything to, but not to handle your feelings is bomb. Bonkers, but it's also like women, we also need to be very practiced at how to handle feelings. I'm feeling I okay. will cry for you tonight. That's why when people say wild shit to me, like Amanda Seal hates black men, I'm like, check my record. You know, you know how the politicians be like, check my voting record. I'm like, check my money record. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to Real, real Scenario. Scenario. Shout out to all our real lovers out there. Hi everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Rhonda, you want to tell them where we're at today? Oh, I do, because we are in a very nice looking place. I know y'all see all the fixtures, all the things. I just want to shout out the fine, fine, fine folks at City Ridge Apartments. We so appreciate you sponsoring this episode. If you are in the market for a beautiful, luxurious DC home, Please visit cityridgedc.com. And Erica, you know, I love you. I appreciate you. We appreciate you guys so much. Yes, Beautiful yes, spot. Yes. Beautiful just, spot. It's very sexy. Yeah. It's very sexy in here. So before we get started, if welcome. If you're new here, um, you are now part of the Real Lover gang. And to officially be initiated, just hit the subscribe button. That's it. All, All the, the show. Dre YouTube. said just hit the subscribe button. That, like, share. You got to do like seven things mm-hmm. to get in gang. <laughs> yeah. You you just in, what do they call it? When, when, uh, between the preliminaries, I don't know. Like, yeah, you you got to greet. This is a meet yeah. and greet phase. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. and then you got to go through all the initiation. Then you got to write like a that. review, and then yeah. once you do that, gang, gang. There we go. Then you gang, gang. There we go. <laughs> well, today's a special day. Uh, what'd you call it, Rhonda? Our first second. Yes, our guest? first second. Explain like, that to them. So this very special guest has already been a guest, but she was also our first guest. Yes, and so. now she's our first. Part two. Do you feel special? I didn't know I was the first guest. Yes, I did know I was the first guest. Yes, you did. Yes. Oh my gosh. Welcome back, Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals. <laughs> Seals. <laughs> you said every time you're in D.C., D.C. treats you well. How has D.C. been thus far on your trip? Fabulous. D.C. really treats me well. Now I have, I have the radio show here in D.C., so you can listen to the Amanda Seals show 10 to 3 on Magic in D.C. You yes. can also listen to it wherever you get your podcast. Um, but it's a syndicated radio show, so, I mean, it's all over the nation, but mm-hmm. to be on the air in D.C., which has always been, like, a market that's shown me so much love, like, it really means a lot. So, you know, I am happy to be here. We yeah. are happy to have you here. And I will say, with we have our friendship. We're working with Amanda. Amanda is just amazing. Oh, Dre. <laughs> Like it's it's oh. amazing to see it from the outside, but when you're on the inside and see how somebody works too, it's just like she's a hard working black woman. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. No problem, no problem. So you're here for the second time. Yes. Uh I think we have to address uh we wouldn't call it an elephant in the room, but you know, last time you were here, you uh-huh. were in a relationship. And I wanna quote you had a uh a, a, a reel that went viral on this show. Like, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, it went viral. You did. Like, yeah. Cool. And okay. people really loved what you were saying. And one of the things you said in it was, "Until you never experienced a nigga try." But I have been with people who were like not gonna let me go, but they also weren't trying to improve. So, like, what are we really doing? I have never experienced until being with. I have never experienced a nigga try. That's a never one. Not one. Never. It's true. 
And then I experienced a nigga stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. last time you were on the show, you quickly. were in a relationship, but shortly after you were no longer in one and you did it creatively on Instagram. The announcement was very creative. Rhonda actually said it to me first. <laughs> Loved. Very creative. We should probably plug that real like in Please, right yes. here. So right you can here. just see <laughs> too good. How you announced that. Amanda Alert. Amanda Alert. Amanda Alert. Amanda Alert. Amanda Alert. Ooh, that's not cute. That is not cute. All right, y'all, listen up. Got some big news here at the Amanda Seals Troll Center. Looks like she is no longer in a relationship and has been relegated back to the streets. Tough break. <gasps> Isn't that a shame? I'm not surprised. <laughs> she always running the damn mouth. You know? Okay. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that. Running that mouth. Mm. Black love loses again. <laughs> Can we call it black love? I mean, they was both light skinned. I told you she can't keep a man. I told y'all. I told y'all she can't keep a man. What I say? I bet he wanted a white woman. Right. Now she knows it's for the best and that the higher power is always working in her favor. But you know, they had built a life together. So uh, it's gonna take some time for her to heal and recenter herself. So it's the perfect time to really get in that ass. Exactly. So I'm gonna need y'all to get focused on extra stations. Okay, 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 Karen's what you got. Well, me and the Karens, uh, we can get busy saying that this happened because she's always talking this black stuff. Ooh, I like that. I'm sure even he's tired of hearing about it. Cracker this, cracker that. <laughs> cracker box, cracker jacks. White Jesus, black Jesus, white Santa, black Santa. The blood is still red, the suit is still red, <laughs> the states are still red. Okay, Becky, okay. She probably can't even cook. Am I right? Probably cooking rice in a rice cooker. Two black women who only reads blog headlines and believes them. Me and my hashtag squeal squad, we gonna drop in them DMs and remind her that she's a failure. And she should never talk about relationships again. What's she know? You know she blocked me. She always run her mouth. She thinks she a man. Exactly. <laughs> a real queen wouldn't have so much to say. Mm. How can she be a queen if she thinks she a king? I feel you black man. I see you, queen. I see you, king. I see you. Good. Good shit. Good shit. All right, brother hotel. What you got? Well, it seems like the correct thing to do is put together a series of videos that defame her. The first being one that labels her a narcissist. The second being her uh, continual perpetuation of the gay agenda, going from sister to supporting sis. And the third, of course, concluded with a false uh, and erroneous projection of her as one who hates black men. <laughs> oh, they haven't been on the blogs yet. You see, the blogs is how I found out that the vaccine was turning everybody gay. That gay agenda, and she be down with that. She the same one talking about we need to be called cisgender. Sis, focus on getting you a nick. Brother Hotel. That seems like quite a tall order. You gonna be able to pull that off by yourself? You do got a point there. Uh, let me call on my Hotel brethren. <laughs> All right, everybody, looks like we've got our plans in place. It's time to lock in for Operation Beat a Bitch While She's Down. Yeah. Woo! No, if you buck on a heart, yeah. Beat a bitch down. Woo! <laughs> Great idea. Great plan. Beat her. I don't got nothing better to do. Never liked her. Never. You know she got me. Y'all got me fucked up. I think people just want to know what happened. Oh, um, <laughs> well, that little thing. You know what it is? It's 
it's always interesting when you're on a healing process Mm -hmm. that if you're constantly in a healing process, then you are constantly becoming more aware of things that you may not have been aware of before. Mm. Like even in listening to that, that makes me cringe that a nigga trying was enough. That was a standard. Like, that's wild to me. Like, hearing you say that back is like, oh, my God. You hear that? I'm over here heavy breathing, like, because I've been there. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think a lot of women who are, so, like, you started out this podcast by saying, like, Amanda works so hard. Like, you know, she's, like, really, you know, on her shit, et cetera. And I think a lot of women like myself suffer from smart woman, dumb girl syndrome. Explain that. Oh, girl, I will leave this room. <laughs> <laughs> and... What I consider smart woman dumb girl syndrome to be is that we are like book smart. We are even like um, we are savvy. Like we might be business career smart. driven. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But we're not heart smart. Mm-hmm. So and that doesn't mean that you don't have emotional intelligence. What that means is that like there really is a dynamic to like being in relationships with like cisgendered heterosexual men that like some women have mastered Mm -hmm. and that are able to understand. And like, if you didn't have the right people around you, like growing up, you kind of never like learn those skills, Mm -hmm. you know, like I have a lot of skills. (laughs) I'd never had those skills. I was also flat chested till like 98. So like I was also like a late bloomer. Yeah. Um, And so there's just a constant work, in progress around like my own. Now, mind you, I can see somebody else's easy, clear as day, 2020, but even actually more than 2020. I'm like Jordy on Star Trek with the visor. Like I can actually <laughs> see better than all of y'all, you know, but when it's my own self, which is the norm, like yeah. your own self, like you don't have the same ability, but I feel like what really happened was that I like crossed over into a space of, Um, maturity that like my partner just did not want to go to. And that ends up being a catalyst for seeing like a lot of other things Mm. that I hadn't really maybe not allowed myself to be before, but that I didn't consider to be deal breakers before. But if you don't want to grow up, that's a deal breaker. We have to grow. We have to grow. And, um, you know, I think that, the biggest lesson I learned was what it looks like when someone loves themselves. Hmm. That's a good one. And just as black people, like we just aren't really taught how to love ourselves. Like we don't even know what that looks like a lot of times. Like I think so many of us are in Mm -hmm. that process on a regular basis. Like what does that actually mean? Does it just mean like going to get my nails done? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Audre Lorde talks about how like, no, like loving yourself is loving your community. Mm -hmm. You know, like loving yourself is being a part of like creating the spaces that you're in, making them lovable. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, And also like, allowing the possibility for you to experience joy, allowing for you to heal. There's work that you have to do to do that. And so a lot of the brothers that I know that I have dated, like they have not actively done that. So if they're not even giving themselves the opportunity to love themselves, and I'm not saying anything new, people have said this before, but if they're not giving themselves the Mm -hmm. opportunity to love themselves in a real way, how can you possibly love someone else? Not even just love me. Like that's like, that's your kids, like, et cetera. Anyone. You know? Yeah. So that was like a real like, boom, like, oh, you're not even doing the things for yourself. Yeah. That would be demonstrative of you loving yourself. Mm. Like, I know that Mm. I've had to go to therapy because I'm like standing in the way, like I have trauma and I have behaviors that are in the way of my access to joy. (laughs) So then it's my responsibility. Yeah. To go and do that. To go and do that. Yeah. And I, I, I brought some of that in our relationship and it was in the way of our joy in our relationship. So I had to actively work to like remove that yeah. from getting in the way of our joy in our relationship. But then if I remove it and they still ain't joining our relationship with somebody. The sub, sub, we process <laughs> of elimination. <laughs> That's saying. That's Both true. of us have to be on that. Like, mm-hmm. did, like, and I think at the end of the day, like the nigga didn't like me. Why you say that? Damn. That was a that was a very sharp summation, a very sharp summation. <laughs> I mean, like grew to not or never did in your assessment. I don't know that he ever did. You think he was using you? Mm-hmm. Just playing the game as long as so oh. after after we broke up about a month after we broke up, 
I got a letter. I got an anonymous letter from somebody that said that they had seen me on this podcast. This one. This podcast? This podcast. Okay. So shout out to y'all. Hey. <laughs> and they were like, oh, um, I saw you on that podcast and you were saying that you were in love with and you must be like the only person in the world that didn't know that they were an opportunist. Mm. Oh, damn. And then they went on to, to say a lot of things in this letter that I'm not even going to share here, but they were all accurate. And it wasn't a scorned person that had been with him before, but it was somebody who said, I wanted to share this with you because it's, it's clear that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that it's, you know, just like woman to woman, I just wanted you to have that knowledge. And again, like, I'm not calling him an abuser. Like, I'm not saying any of those things. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like opportunism plays out in a number of different ways mm -hmm. And it can represent itself in relationships in a myriad of ways. Sometimes someone's an opportunist in just that, like, they just want to have somebody. Yep. Yeah. Like, they're not trying to clout chase necessarily. Right. They just want partnership. Yeah. They want to float. In some way. They want to yeah. be floated and yeah. whatever that looks like. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I think it was more that. Like, I don't think he was clout chasing, but I think that this setup was probably advantageous and comfortable. Um, and I desire to make the person I'm with comfortable. Yeah. Right. So like, and that's part of my own self, low self-esteem. That's my, my people head pleasing. is blown off. And yeah. I don't, how that's long are we in here? There, there's so many yeah. things that you say. I have a question about, I want to go back first is when it comes to those men that you were talking to, did they see that they had issues and were going about, their own way of trying to solve them or they didn't think they had issues at all? No, I've always feel like I've dated men who for the most part acknowledge they have issues and they've accepted it about themselves. Sure. Like I'm not changing this. Is just this is I just am. who I am. Mm -hmm. mm. And it feels like it's like it's somehow for them a sense of, um, I don't know. It's like a source of strength that I've accepted these flaws. And you should be proud of me. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> I've come to terms and, with it. And you know what? A lot of us do this thing where we have been taught about this whole like making lemons from making lemonade from lemons type shit with our trauma. And like that's bullshit. Like making lemonade from lemons is like, oh, I got stuck at the beach. So I made it a beach day. You know what I'm saying? Like making lemonade from lemons isn't like my my parents a abandoned me yeah. and so you know now I'm a real nigga because <laughs> I know how to be abandoned like right. that's not making yeah. lemonade from lemons right yeah. because yeah. also a lot of times it's like you've accepted a behavior that was never okay and you didn't deserve that yeah you didn't deserve to be treated that way and whether you want to judge them or not like that was not how you should have been treated as a child. Yep. And you have to be able to acknowledge that mm -hmm. to be able to acknowledge how it affected you and how you are now carrying and perpetuating through that. So like, even for myself, like my dad is whack and you know, I have abandonment issues because of that. Yep. And now I like respond to certain things a certain way because of those abandonment issues. But I had to like be able to grasp like, Oh, this is because of this. And so I do that. And that's in the way of me getting this source of joy yes. mm. in order to like move past it. But that's also like an ego thing. You have to be able to be willing to say like, oh, I'm toxic too. <laughs> I got to work on that. I got to work on that. It's funny. One of the other things you talked about, which could have been a part of thing but maybe not is just like when you know that you are going through your own stuff everything that you just said your trauma you're working on your stuff then you have a partner that may feel like they don't have all of that right like they don't have trauma they don't or they they haven't immediately associated any I feel like even still sometimes it's like but you may still need outside help to help me to support me you can't necessarily fix my process like I have I have my own process but you may not have the tools to be my partner while I work through my process. Like I still, you still have to be doing some work. You can't just think, well, 
you do that and I'll be over here. Like I'll be kick, kicking it and mm-hmm. chilling while you work on your stuff. To me, everyone needs to be working on something. My lift might be heavier, right? My, I might have to carry way more lumber, but you need to be able to like hold my back up while I'm doing it or make sure there's nothing on the steps. Like we have to be a team in order to work through the things, whatever the things are. If it's my things, your things, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, I mean, we, I don't feel like our society has like the tools. Like we, we're not taught that. Like, I mean, some of us, did like peer counseling, <laughs> you know, in yeah. middle school. Yeah. But also everybody has trauma. There's that. Right. So like there, sure. nobody is devoid of trauma. Yeah. Um, like even when white people be like, there's no such thing as white privilege. We all have trauma. It's like, that's not what we're talking about. But bad. yes, even you, Rich Becky, like you have trauma too. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, but th- to me, that is the biggest lie. Is mm-hmm. to tell yourself that you didn't have trauma mm-hmm. and the lie of like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And it's like, but you're not yeah. like you're not. And that's OK. Totally. Like, but in order for that to work for both of us, like we got to acknowledge those things. Yeah. And in the best case scenario, I guess, like. Trust your partner is coming from the best place. Like, I don't think in hindsight that he ever really trusted that I was coming from the best place. Like there was always a certain adversarialness that I would talk about. Like, why are we coming from a, why is there adversarialness in our interaction? You know, yeah. like well, we are supposed I to am team. on your side. Like yeah, I have sure. demonstrated this through words, through actions, through money. Like I am on your side, mm-hmm. but that's the type of shit that ain't got nothing to do with me, yo. That has nothing to do with me. Like, they're, like I'm sure every broad before me and whoever you living with now is also dealing with that. Do you play sports? She yes. I don't understand. Like, I learned that in sports. Like, my coach would yell at me, scream at me during practice, but game time, it was like, we all on the same team and all of this is collectively still, for us men. to get to the goal. Those are men. You got mama issues. You ain't never going to be able to look at a woman like she's on your team. Mm-hmm. Ever. Damn. Am I lying? No, you look <laughs> not at all. Not not at all. I think I'm like having such a And I say that as some let me can I just say something real yeah, quick? No, please. I say that as someone who it took me who had daddy issues years to be able to look at brothers like, oh, you're on my like in a relate in a romantic relationship, oh, we're on the same team. Cause yeah. I had the adversarialness too. Yeah. And then I had to get over my shit to be like, no, that's not my like that's you're not coming at, at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're we're doing this together. We're doing this together. Yeah. And that's how I came into this. That was my last relationship. Like I had that breakthrough yeah. of like, oh, like I can wholly care about you without it putting me in danger because I got me. Yeah. And what you said is I feel like what will, what people will do to manipulate you, especially if you're mature enough to recognize your own trauma, your own issues, you're going to therapy. They could look at you and say, see, you got all the issues. You have all the problems. You need to get yourself together. You. And then they'll act perfect, but they'll use that to manipulate you. And I've seen that so many times. We've had people write in to where it's like the man is truly manipulating them, making that girl or playing the victim, essentially saying that like you're the one doing mm-hmm. everything wrong. Right. And you have all the issues. You need to go to therapy. I don't need to go to therapy. We don't need to go to therapy together. It's it. you. <laughs> Same. I've lived Same. it. Same. And I felt so this person was someone from my past. So similar to like your dynamic where we dated when we were so much younger. Mm -hmm. And so we entered it with a lot of euphoria, like, Oh, this is so nostalgia. Like, Oh my God. But but it was probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years in between the time. And then we reconnect and I have like, I'm in therapy. I had been through therapy. I had identified so many things. And one of the things that I had was trust issues again, because similar to you, Daddy issues, abandonment issues. So I inherently distrust. I'm 40. Oh, these are father issues now. Yeah. Oh, these are fa- sorry, yeah. <laughs> father. At 40, they become father we, issues. We call yeah, just, daddy. They just Not level daddy up. Yeah. This is father issues. <laughs> and um, I, I admitted that to him in a time where I felt like we had safe, gotten to a place. I felt space, safe to say like, say, yep. Bow. <laughs> yep. 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 Mm. I was like, you know, I have trust issues and I want you to know that because I want you to give me grace when it appears and I haven't. Look my at two, you being emotionally I, okay. intelligent like, and self-effacing. I just want grace when it happens. And once it happened, it was totally used against me. It was wielded against me when truly he was like, you know, like me not calling you for nine hours when I normally would call you is 
that's not I was I mean what do you mean like see that's your trust issues like mm, that's weaponize that's, it and I was like dog so the fact I wish I never told you this like it is literally being used against me as a weapon and and then that makes you clam up even more then it, it almost feels like it's undoing until you learn that that can then be used against you mm -hmm. Until you learn that, it's like, oh, now I just need to go back in my show. Now I didn't trust my father. I didn't trust any of the men up to this moment. And now I can't even, I don't even know when I'm supposed to feel safe. Because what I thought was safety wasn't safety. It's like, how do you know when it's a truly safe space? Like, that's a, a real question that I, I'm asking you whether you can answer it or not. I but feel like, like had he said to you, okay, let's, let's get down to brass tacks. Like... Me not calling you for nine hours. Do you feel like that may be part of your trust issues? Mm -hmm. I feel like even just broaching it, it that way, that way yeah. allows you to self-explore. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, no, it's not. Nigga, you usually call me in nine right, hours. Based on patterns. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Then the, the safe space is in him trusting that you are, li that you are a, a valid ex examiner of your own behaviors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like someone should be able to watch and see through action if someone does that. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you a valid examiner of your own behaviors? I will tell you that in my relationship, in my effort to try to like create safe spaces, mm -hmm. one of the things that I know that used to happen was for whatever reason, like he just wouldn't say things that were bothering him until they were retaliations. So it I wouldn't get it said, but I'll then now that up. I have something that's bothering me, it's we're going to deflect by talking mm -hmm. about this thing. Yep. And so to try to curtail that, my, so I'm a root person, right? I'm not going to talk about the branches. I'm like, the root of this feels like mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable sharing things in the moment when they upset you. Why is that? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. And then I was like, so what if we do a thing where every day, at the end of the day, because for the most part, like we would go to bed together. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, what if at the end of every day, like we have a safe space where we like share whatever is on our chest for the day. Yeah. And we also like share whatever gratitude we have for each other for the day. And that was me trying to make like a space that we both know mm -hmm. is non-judgment space. Like I'm coming to the space like, all right, whatever the nigga tell me, I got to take it. I got to receive it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> And no surprises. so like these are the types of things that I was trying to like employ for our wellness, because I do feel like at this point, especially if you're in your 40s trying to be in a relationship and it's like yeah. new, like you need tools like yeah. not, I mean, everybody needs the tools, but like we're so fucked up. We we need tools. Yeah. And because we're so conditioned well, that's by, what I meant by, by moving along. Yeah. Alone. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're not used to being in tandem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think some people come into the relationship thinking that. You'll just like figure it get out. with someone and yeah, and figure it out or mm -mm. that it'll just be an attachment. Yeah. You know, like I know that there were certain things with him that he seemed to just not grasp would shift if you're with somebody. Yeah. You know, like even just basic stuff. Like if it's 530 a.m. and you want to go for a run, so be it. But like, can you be quiet about it? Because mm. I'm still asleep. Oh, yeah. so I got a tiptoe. Yes. It please. I mean, but that's like, why wouldn't you want to? Yeah. Like, I'm, nobody's saying like, don't go run. Yeah. But like, maybe you put your shoes, like your sneakers by the door in the morning, yes. right? Like, the, it's a big enough house. Maybe you go get dressed in the other room or something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but it's just that kind of thoughtfulness that yeah. comes with partnership. Mm. And that's what comes with successful relationships or really healthy relationships is they put each other first. If you're constantly thinking about the other person, then I think you'll have a healthy relationship. But what you said is important because I was that type of person, like not sharing things. And I realized that I was doing my own relationship a disservice because my wife would think nothing bothered me. Mm. because so she would even she's go living. harder on me and like <laughs> express all this stuff and she's like oh you're fine like I, you can take the brunt and everything mm. and yes. I'm like I can't and she was like well why don't you share the things <laughs> why don't you share the things yeah. with me why and didn't you because I don't want to be extra I don't want to upset the apple cart well it's more I think it was my sports background like the mentality of like if you're interested on the sideline but if you're if you are on the field, I don't want to hear you complain about nothing. You're so, not on the field. You're in a relationship. I know. But in my mind, certain things is just like you just suck field. it up and just do it. Like you don't got to. 
and it doesn't bother me as much. It's like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to do it. All right, whatever. I'm just going to do it. All right, whatever. I'm just going to do it. And I think you're conditioned as a man sometimes too to not complain or even sharing about certain yes, things. Yes, yeah, because it looks wet. It looks, it looks weak. weak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, no, nah, I'm good. But I would constantly say things and then she'll come at me or give me this perfection complex, which was really damaging for us early on is that she saw me as perfect because I never complained about never anything, never said I had any issues, never said I had any problems. So the moment I did something wrong, which is just a normal thing that people do because I'm not perfect. It was like all hell broke loose and everything was wrong and everything. And I'm like, just because of this, like just because of this, you're mad at me. But I set the standard because I never told her I had any problems, never told her I had any issues. I made it seem like everything was great, but I was hurting inside because I'm like, I understand that you have a lot of things that you're going through. Like, what about me? Like, what about me? But it's like, you got to say something in order for people to know that there's something wrong with you. Absolutely. And don't you want like the support? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like the other part of that. To unlearn that, I guess. Yeah, to, there you to go. Unlearn there that. Because it's not hard that. to do. It's just hard to unlearn it because it's yeah. been positioned. And then even with the effort of trying to like let men know, like, no, really. No, seriously. Then you have so many men who are like, quit trying to get us to share our feelings. Like, there's like movements. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I literally saw a comment the other day that was like, men don't fall for this because the moment you let it down, she's never good. I'm like, do you know how wildly scary that is? Like, yeah. I just feel like that's that all connects to this idea, which is a really imperialist idea. And it's at the end of the day, it's not even just imperialist, but this idea that women are really only like meant for property value Mm. and that we are not fully like thinking, breathing vessels. And the idea that you would trust someone to birth the baby that you would give everything to, but not to handle your feelings is bonkers. But it's also like women, we also need to be very practiced at how to handle feelings because we're in the same patriarchal system yep. and we be perpetuating that bullshit too. Yeah. Damn nigga, why are you crying? You know, yeah. or damn nigga, why are you crying? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, the ratchetemics, like, it's like, stop. Yeah. And I feel like, the softness that we all deserve for each other. We Mm -hmm. have to give for each other. Like I know that even in being able to say like, okay, um, I have an issue with something. Like I would be met with like, I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be somebody who complains or who has an issue with things. And like, he's looking at me, like there's something wrong with me for For stating when I don't like something, et cetera. But that all goes back to your trauma. Yeah. Because you grew up in a space where when you did that, you were scolded for that, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And I just think that we all have so much to work through. So much. Yeah. And and also that it's a human experience. It is not a, I say this so much on the show, it's mm. not a woman experience. It's not a man experience. Like we all need to be able to ha- be uh, like, let it out. We all need to have room to do that. Like you have tear ducts, my guy. It's it like <laughs> keep it, your heart three stacks. Yeah, keep like, your heart. It's okay if you cry. God literally made you I to saw, do so. Um, so on Cat Williams' interview on uh, that show on Club Shay Shay, he yeah. was like saying uh, he had said something in passing mm-hmm. that a lot of men were like catching, latching onto, even though the th- the thought it got expounded upon. They just mm-hmm. latched onto this first little part where he said a lot of women don't get men because they are acting like men. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, I remember this. So then I asked my like Instagram, like, so men, I just want to hear from y'all. I mean, so many women felt the need to chime in. I'm just <laughs> like, course. I didn't ask y'all. <laughs> we, we also got to stop that. We got to do <laughs> that. That's part of making a safe space. Yeah, right. Yep. And so many men were like, listing the ways in which that the ways in which they felt women act like men and all of them had examples that were simply just things that are toxic toxic masculinity like mm. you know just being competitive you know just um trying to trying to run shit you know trying to question things and i'm like this is if this is women acting like men, is it okay when men do men this? Do, yes. Yes. I remember this post. I remember this post. <laughs> and like, no answer. None. I mean, the issue is that what we're taught as men, well, a lot of men think that the title of leader or being a man is a title that's just given, I guess, and not earned. Like when it comes to like relationships. So 
if a man is like, you should submit to me, he's like, because I'm a man. Just because. Because this is my gender, you should submit to me and give up all control and have me lead. But if it's like, if you haven't proven that I can trust you, if you haven't shown up consistently time over time over time over time, why would I submit to you? Why am I, why do I have to submit? That, that is a weird word. Like, it's like, why can't we support each other and know that you have your strengths and I have my strengths? Like, your dick and balls does not give you leadership <laughs> skills, bro. That's <laughs> very true. Like, it's like so I can true. tell you, it's like, very true. there's things that I'm really good at mm-hmm. that, like, my partner is just maybe not good at. Mm-hmm. Like, but there's also things that they may be really good at that I'm not good at. And it's not even anything gender based. I'm a really effective leader i am an mc i move crowds right yeah. so like if we had to be in a situation where i gotta move shit you know move crowds like so because you're the man we're gonna expect you to be better at that no we got to move the crowd <laughs> like so you don't think there there should be a tiered structure in the household i don't even like, understand this is bonkers to me <laughs> like <laughs> i just don't I don't know why that's necessary Mm -hmm. because we have seen time and time again when we actually talk to our elders that that isn't actually the real way that things were working. Like in some like, okay, the man had this like status that was given to him by society, by society. Yeah. But then in one household, like granny was actually handling all the bills, yep. you know, and mm-hmm. actually running all of that. Like, you know? in fact, grandpa couldn't even read, so he can't count the money. That's he right. doesn't even know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Then, you know, you have a other household where it's like, okay, the man's supposed to be the one who's the farmer, but granny was the one who actually had the green thumb. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I just think that when we look at like this idea that men are at the head of the household, I think that that's like the idea about that is, protectiveness, et cetera. But Provision. I don't know why that has to be contended with the head. That to me ends up being about dominance. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that, cause that's what patriarchy is. Patriarchy is about dominance. And I know niggas is in the comments right now. Like, see, that's why she's single. And it's like, yeah, that is exactly why I'm single because we live in a society that hasn't caught up to women like me. Bars. And I know see, that. Well, and so many women guys. in the comments are like, Yes, mm-hmm. because there's uh, there are men who have caught up and they are in loving, healthy relationships yeah, with women who are bad at bad at it. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. I, <laughs> I, I just I think there's no one size fits all. You have to do what works for your household. If that structure that him here, you there, kids, if that's what works for y'all. Right. Great. Out. But that is not the blanketed. You cannot just paint that with a with a big brush you can't even when we just look at like people just love to throw things out there like what about africa (laughs) and i'm like okay so there would be households you know that had like three wives right but it's not always the first wife who was the most loved right or who was the most skilled or whatever like we are humans we are so complex like there Mm -hmm. is no just like you know, um, blanket way of putting things. And for the most part, those efforts that have been made were made to control people. Like Henry VIII literally started a whole other church because niggas wouldn't let him getting, get married to Anne Boleyn. Like they'll just change rules yeah. when it doesn't fit when them. When it doesn't work. He was married, like yeah. completely married. The lady was in Spain. Like we married. And he was like, nah, I'm trying to get a divorce. And they were like, you can't get a divorce. Not by the church of England. No, I think he started the church of England. They were like, by the Catholic church, you can't get divorced. He was like, watch this. Watch me work. Then started a whole other church just to marry a woman that he beheaded. (laughs) So like, what are we? It's not funny, but it is. It's just the way you said it. (laughs) So ultimately, like all of this stuff is really Mm -hmm. um, malleable. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's yep. it's malleable. Like it's only in place for like the the little the, the little people mm-hmm. because the the people at the top making the decisions about what we get they to do. It however, they want to, it that's to my be. point. I'm still trying to digest that all because it's overwhelming to think like, oh, so we do have choice. Like even gender, which is a whole other topic than this episode. But like even gender is a ma- it's literally a made up thing. Like it's yeah. just a construct and. We live in a society that has accepted that construct. And so thus people are like, well, I like that construct. So let's hold on to it. Mm -hmm. But you still have to acknowledge it is a construct, though. It's just that you like it. 
Yeah, it just fits. It's if work. it, it works for you. It's worked for a long time. I want to go back to this smart woman, dumb girl, like thing. I wanted to talk about that too. Why yeah. am I so good at my work and so bad at my house? Why? Like, what are what are? Because clearly, I almost jumped out of my chair because I've done it. I've done it, and I do not want to repeat it. But you know what it made me think about, and it's um, it was an interview. I can't remember where it was, but I believe it was Tyler Perry who was talking about like their with women in his that he knows that are very well set up. Like they have everything. They have a great career. They have money. They're very wealthy. The only thing they don't have is a person, and they are with a man who is. Oh, yeah, really good to them right good to them based on his his definition but they can't like contribute financially and i think sometimes that that's such a limited go ahead sorry it's it, it is a very very limited like contribution but also a very limited like perspective around the relationship because you yeah. don't really know no that's what i was saying yeah, yeah not the contribution part but that's a limited perspective yes it's a very limited perspective but i feel like that those women or or because I'm going to put myself in that group too. Okay. Clearly, I'm not a millionaire by far, but oftentimes I have out earned the men that I've dated. I've and not for any other reason than I made better choices, perhaps, or maybe I was just in the right place at the right time. Maybe they just weren't afforded that, whatever the reasons were. And I found that in majority of those dynamics, that dumb girl thing overpowered or it's just like oh I'm really smart and I know how to process this and I can fix him and I can push him in this direction but that was a dumb thing I thought I was actually you think that being... was a dumb thing sometimes yeah because I was I was I like that was a dumb thing didn't make more than I don't you think you that was a dumb thing not, not no not that because he didn't make more than me but when that was the dynamic I felt like well I just need to bring him along like I just need and and he wasn't even showing that he should have been that brought along. Dumb part. Thing. Yes, yes he wasn't <laughs> sure yeah that's, that's what I'm saying say, nothing yeah, wrong with bringing him dumb, along yes, yes it was the it was the I feel like I can because I don't really I don't need you to help me pay my bills I don't need you to contribute to this so that's cool you could just kind of like we gotta well, we stop figure. doing shit for people that didn't ask us to do it for them mm. or they don't do it for themselves that same yeah it's just like yeah. that's a yeah. whole circle back exactly <laughs> like yeah. i'm over here loving you more than you're loving yourself yeah like but i i'm i mean the smart woman dumb girl concept is really just this idea also that like the skills that make us effective in our work life mm -hmm. aren't helpful in yeah. our love life i'm like i remember a scenario where i was having a conversation with a brother where I was toe to toe with him in terms of like, he's saying something. I'm like, well, you know, and then I have a retort because mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. Right. And he just got so kerfuffled. Um, and he was just like, Oh my God. Like I just, uh, it's just, it's too much. And I was like, what is too much? He's like, I mean, I'm trying to talk to you. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking, talking back to you, <laughs> but I wasn't emotional. Like, it was like, we're just having, I mean, I, I would say it was heated, but we weren't like raising our voices or anything, but yeah. like, I was keeping up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, it's just, you know, you're just like, you're just doing too much. And that made me emotional because that made me feel like, damn, like I'm literally just talking to you and it's just, and now I'm getting insulted. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I started crying. Well, now he know what to do. Once I became an emotional blob of a girl, now it was, now you can have compassion. Now you can like see where I'm coming from or, or now you even care to see where I'm coming yeah. from. And that made me feel like, oh, so you need me to feel, you need to meet, you need me to be like low key in a smaller place than you. Like you need to meet, you need to feel like I'm impaired, mm -hmm. even though I, I'm not, but like you, you need to feel like that to be able to handle me what's that and so like that felt like when I was in my smart woman phase mm -hmm. I was too much mm -hmm. right when I'm speaking to you logically and we're having an exchange <laughs> and I'm, you know I'm responding to what you're saying very clearly and thoughtfully no this is this is how I sound right I sound like I don't have a vagina or boobs or anything I'm just an AI machine but now that I'm over here like yeah. <laughs> like come here, now, baby. Yeah, now come it's come yeah, come yeah. here, girl. I got you. Don't got cry, you. sweetheart. Don't cry. Sweetheart. <laughs> he was from Brooklyn. Um Yeah, like I just You know what else y'all do in that smart woman dumb girl phase? Mm. Y'all listen to your homeboys. 
Because they be trying to tell you a lot of times, like, you might listen. Be right a little bit. Bro, ain't little it? Bit. And then y'all will just go. I got so many homegirls. You'll tell them, That's like, facts. bro is not it at all. He, he, he lying to you, but then y'all just. Da, 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 no. Let me think. <laughs> well, no, when so, you were doing it, you were lying, but he's a great person. <laughs> <laughs> I had a homeboy who. So, you know, like the folks on the street that are unable to get mental health help. Yeah. We'll label them like, oh, like that's crazy Jody or et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Mm-hmm. But they be saying real shit. Right. Yep. I had a homeboy who who was unable to get mental health help and he like, you know, was just having like episodes. Mm-hmm. He pulled up on my mom's house one day and started telling my mom like, yo, you got to get her away from him. Like her her light has dimmed since she's been with him. Like her crown has shifted or whatever. And I was like, what? <laughs> who is he? First of all, I'm like, why you pull up to my mom's house? Like, right. you know, but I and I didn't know that at that time that he was in a mental health space. I thought he was like on, on shrooms or some shit. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, if I'm being honest, either way, I would have been like, well, yeah. Um, but he was right. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> he was right. But you're so right. And now I actually, now I go straight to my boys. Like my homeboy saved me so much time recently <laughs> because I hit him and was like, how do you feel about this person? And he was like, oh, that's a cornball. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a full on cornball. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. In what fashion? Like and talk to me how you got to that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have to ask you again. I'll just mm-hmm. know how to figure Walk it out on my own. Yeah. So he like ran it down. Now, did I still proceed? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but. You were now aware. So now when the cornballery showed up, I didn't like, talk ah, myself out of it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. Uh-huh. Well, that's what he was talking he about. He is a yes. boy. He is. <laughs> yeah, he we'll was be, a cornball. We'll be trying to help y'all. I don't get it. Y'all just be. It's that glaze of like. No, it's hope. <laughs> yeah. Hope, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, it's that. hope. Like, we really want to be <laughs> loved and want to love. Like, it's so funny. Like, people be asking me, people like, oh, I'm sure your DMs are blowing up. No, they're not. No. It's just an assumption that people have. Quiet. <laughs> Quiet. My DMs are full of Palestine and puppies. Like, those <laughs> are my it. DMs. Like, there's nobody. And anytime a man does come in my DM, they're so wild. It's extreme. It is yes. like a dicture. I had a man come in my DMs recently and was like, um, you need to date a regular nigga. And I was like, actually, huh. I've done quite a bit of that. Um, and I'm not regular, so I don't know why that would be what I need to date. Uh, Your shade is so good. Remember, it's just so good. I don't just, pay attention, okay? <laughs> I just remember when you did your uh, documentary here at DC and you were talking after and you were talking about your investment in black <laughs> And black men. Brother. <laughs> I should have returns by this point. Okay. I have invested we in my dividends. Bla- That's why when people say wild shit to me, like Amanda Seals hates black men, I'm like, check my record. You know, you know how the politicians be like, check my voting record. Mm-hmm. I'm like, check my money record. Okay. Yeah. Check my time record. Mm-hmm. I should be getting Amazon gift cards from women who are with these men now saying, Thank mm-hmm. you for the time that you put into Hussein. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> where it should be. Like, no, I've given niggas careers. Literal mm. careers. I mean, yeah. like, all right, go off in the world, be somebody. Like, <laughs> that needs absolutely. to be your next. Um, that needs to be your next skit. Like, I, you know I the commercials. Like, as soon as she said if you've it, experienced I was like, mesothelioma, yo. I feel like you need to do that. Like, <laughs> if you've had the benefit of being upgraded and taken care of by Amanda Sills, listen, yeah, yeah. and they know who they are. They, are, mm. yeah, they yeah. know who they are. You're welcome. I have listen. It's it, and sometimes it's monetary. Sometimes it's just education. Oh yeah, like it. It can be so much. It's sometimes game. not. Yeah, just game. just game. You know, just even just like you should get a therapist, right? <laughs> and like now they're like in therapy, right? Yeah. But I mean, I've also had the benefit too of like exes who became homies, yeah, mm-hmm. and like seeing their growth, mm-hmm. and that's also like really oh. great because we're able to continuously like show and see each other, like yeah. you know, elevate. But I just feel like there's this idea that one that like women are turning down like so many great men. And I'm just like, that's not, I don't think that's what I don't know think it is. Like that. No. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm not turning down great men. Yeah. Um, I'm turning down the men that, should be turned down. I'm turning down the ones that are Sometimes unqualified. Sometimes I'm getting turned down. 
Like, <laughs> by whack niggas. Like, by ones that shouldn't even and be turned. Shouldn't and then even you start be to question shit. Then you question like, yourself. Like, like, oh, I'm absolutely in that phase right like, now. Like, questioning yourself, like, what? In is the- it possible? I'm not as fly as I think I am. <laughs> Like, I had to go back to therapy for a number of reasons, but also because I was like, oh, like, my self-esteem is shot. Yeah. Shot. I know when your backup is like, nah, I'm good. That part, you mess with your self-esteem. Like, somebody you always knew, like, man, if I wanted to. I never had backups, but I will say that, like, at this point, all of us have that person we know can call that can be like, nah, you still the baddest. And you're like, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) It's when that person's, that's what it actually is. It's when your, your person... It's not making you actually feel better because mm. yeah. typically you can go back to that person and they'll like and you're like yeah I am yeah I'm the fly ass and now they <laughs> said like, it to you and you're like well you oh, actually still might don't. want to <laughs> consider some things so how do you remain hopeful like do you like I don't how know that I am at this point really no. hopeful for what Love. like who knows the next time I'm gonna have sex like really let's be real. Who knows? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if you, you wanted to, have, if stuff. you just wanted to have sex, Amanda, you could have sex. Yes, you could. Like, stop. Like, 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 we're we are not going but to do we that. Have standards. I don't think so. Yeah, you could. Like, like, like the sex that I mean, at just this the point, act I don't of sex. Want, at this point, it needs to be the sex I want. Okay, understandable. Yes, I understand. This dick and pussy game is just ugh, a waste of time. Okay, we did it's it like I'd rather have a Snickers. I get that. I you get said that. what? I'd rather have a Snickers. <laughs> then to like waste the waste the cookies on like something that doesn't deserve it. I, I thought honestly, you were saying I'd rather something watch like niggers with a hard R, and I was oh. like, "What is she saying?" Snickers you said bar. I'd rather have a Snickers. No, Got seriously. It. Sometimes I would just rather be home under the blanket. Like I, I don't even want to do the sport of like playing a game just to have a quick little sex moment. Like you don't I got want that, like one person that from the past that you can always go to that just yes you're but I just still, don't you want know what to do is? that you're in your 20s like your past is 20s. you're barely just out of your 20s out. but your 20s. 20s is yesterday <laughs> last year was your 20s yeah, yeah. so like your past is very like short mm-hmm. and most of those people are probably still in that same part of their life i'm now 42 so like my past, like people have moved on in their lives. Yeah. Like people are yeah. in marriages. Yeah, you can't <laughs> like just go back and have, get it. You, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like we've moved out of that phase. Like the yeah. whole phase, everybody was in the whole phase at one time mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Now there may be some scragglers and you're looking at them like, mm-hmm. no, nope. don't even know why I did it <laughs> See, back then. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> if uh, I'm okay. You know? No, like I tried to talk to a politician for a moment, mm. but then it was just like, his stances weren't where they need to be. You know what? That's what actually deaded it. But what what should have deaded it was when he was like, you know, I'm going to come to L.A. and like take you on a date. And I was like, oh, wow, like I deserve that. So, yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. And then I was like, where do you stay when you come to L.A.? He's like, oh, I'm a Marriott kind of guy. I was like, oh, that's what's up. There's actually a Marriott like around like my way. So, you know, that would be convenient to like mm-hmm. stay over here to go to dinner and stuff. And so later in the conversation, I was talking about how like since the breakup, I was actually like painting my house in the colors that I wanted to because in the relationship he was always like oh I'm a minimalist so I was being respectful of the fact that we're sharing a space and he was like so you got all these rooms and I gotta stay at a Marriott make it make (sighs) sense dog sir that should have been the end that also you know okay the number one reason that niggas holler at me that they'll tell me is because they feel challenged by me And I do not want discourse. I want intercourse. Like, Mm. I don't know what that is, but I have had multiple men be like, yeah, like what turns them on about me is like, they feel like there's going to be some. Yes. Like there's going to be a tussle. They want the tussle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so then when I don't give that, because contrary to what people believe, like when I'm with a man, I don't speak to them the way I speak about, the yeah. occupation Things. of Palestine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which people think that like the passion yeah. that I have about that, like, yeah, I'm not speaking to my man with that tone when I'm at home. I don't think they understand that you're actually irritated too, like if you're speaking in that manner. So if they want you to speak to them in that way, you would have it's to not be... an enduring thing. No. It's like I'm, <laughs> I'm <pissed> responding <laughs> to something. <laughs> so like they when they don't get that from me, like for some reason, that's what they are wanting. Mm-hmm. But I'm showing up in softness. They will then try to trigger it. Yeah. So they'll neg me. You know what negging is? Yeah. 
So yeah. they'll try and neg me. Yeah. And like, that was wild to experience. Like we were on the phone and, I, and like when he, he, like this dude, he had called me when I was driving and I was listening to a Tribe Called Quest record. Mm -hmm. And so when I answered the phone, I was like, back in the days on the Boulevard of Linden, we used to kick routines when the presence was fitting. He was like, "Ugh, you're rapping. That's so annoying. You <laughs> sound like a diva. He just wanted to, he just wanted to argue. It, yeah. Like that's, a, you yeah. know, I remember like we were, on, and this over the course of just one week. And then we're on the phone and he was like, I was like, you know, um, I would love to send you some videos about Palestine because I feel like there's like information that you're missing mm -hmm. that could be really helpful and just forming an opinion. Because he was saying that he just didn't know how to think about it. He just didn't know how to feel about it. And I was like, you know, I do feel that you, you know, um, respect my mind. And he went for now. Girl. I just, ooh. So, so did he still why get a chance after that? No. After that comment? No. Uh, we, oh, yes. Yes. Because I have self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Smart, <laughs> smart woman. <laughs> smart woman. Dumb girl. Dumb girl. Also it. because I'm so trained, um, some in part by you people on this internet, to not come off as like too mm, hard yeah. Yeah. or too short or too sharp. So I will allow mistreatment mm -hmm. to not look like I am a certain way. Yeah. Mm. You'll take it's it. It's very dangerous. Yeah, you'll take it. Yes. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm trying to be better to myself of like, mm -mm. so then like we ended up stopping talking because he was like, um, actually, I'm going to run a scenario by y'all because you're probably going to tell me I'm tripping, but it's fine. Um, can't wait to let's hear it. <laughs> this but is what this like, show's about. Real, real love scenario. scenario. So, okay. So first off, let me just tell you that at first, the first reason it ended was because that next morning, he had called me in the morning at like on a Saturday morning and I, um, well, no, I had texted him and was like, Hey, I told you about those links I was going to send you. You would, you said it was okay. So I'm not sure what you don't know. So I'm kind of like shooting he's in the dark. It, yeah. And he replied back and said, well, you're mistaking, you're confusing me saying, I don't know how to feel about it with, I don't know. Okay. And I said, Oh, I guess I just assumed you didn't know how to feel about it because, because you, you needed more information. information. And he said, well, that's not an assumption you should have made. He was, was a, this all he's through a text? smart ass. That happened. Yes. He's a very smart So ass. this happened on text and he calls me. Okay. And he's like, man, you starting early. And I was like, well, the, the genocide didn't stop because I went to sleep. <laughs> so I'm just, I wake, that's how I've been living since October 7th. Like I go to sleep, I wake up, I, I'm like consuming, right? Yeah, like yeah. this is where we are living. And I don't know when this is going to air, but like, I mean, I came in to do this today and saw that they were like, yeah, we're about to obliterate the rest of the Palestinians. So like, oh if you're into trying to understand something, like you're in it. And I'm you're a immersed. cancer, we yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he was like, well, yeah, like I felt like you were making an assumption and you're really just trying to send me these videos because you want me to think about it the way you want to think about it. And I was like, well, there's really only one moral way to think about this. Yeah. And ultimately, like, you're not going to fuck me if you don't think that way about it. Right. And I'm just keeping it a buck All the way. about mm -hmm. the fuck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, well, you know what? I don't even got time for this. And then I was like, well, I don't got time Click. <laughs> <laughs> Click. So then when we clicked, I... Text him, I said, you know, I guess there's, because there was just things we just didn't have in common. And I was like, you know, yeah. I guess we have more things not in common than I thought, mm -hmm. including like our ideology on integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he replied back and said, don't tell me about integrity when you won't even have a conversation. Now, mind you, I had been trying to have this conversation. Right? Yeah, clearly. So I let that rock for a day. And then the next day I texted and said, I would like to have a conversation because, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Yep. I hate that, by the way, though. Well, Dre, I'm glad we're friends. Um, so <laughs> I said, I'd like to have a conversation. And he yeah. never responded mm. until I did Celebrity Jeopardy. Then I get a text. I get a text on Celebrity Jeopardy. Should I, should I have responded? No, no, but I am. I got him for punishment. <laughs> Father issues. You better sing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my 90s version. Um, so we got on the phone and we actually had a very interesting conversation where he did take accountability for his behavior and all of that. And mm -hmm. was just like, you know, I really didn't handle that properly. Yeah. And I thought so many times about calling you and then I would stop. And just for the men out there, like, don't say that to people. Keep that to yourself. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Why are you not calling 
what's going to (laughs) happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? I don't answer. I don't answer. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Do you think I'm going to scream on you? Like, I was like, it's also a phone call. So if I do, you can hang up. I think he was maybe trying to excuse the absence by saying that he had thought about it multiple times. Possibly. No, that's not a brownie point. Nope. So then he goes, well, you know, I got to tell you this, but you know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to just say it one time. You know what I'm saying? And if you tell anybody, I'm going to deny it. I'm like, what's he about to say? Oh, shit. He was like, it was very difficult not to call you. What, huh? Boy, I, this is a very. He was I, trying to run games. Let That's me know when you're ready he, for the answer it, to the real love scenario. Did he, Go ahead. That, did he say it like that? Just like that. I, he was trying to run game. You see the voice change? I just up too? don't. Yes, yeah. I hate it. I, I, cap up. Hey, listen. <laughs> He got the sip. Let me stop. I don't want to go to jail. Sorry. I mean, I do anything. Yeah, what do you? Did yeah, you yeah, start yeah, to shake? I, I didn't no, do that. No, I didn't. You no, didn't see anything. No. Cut that Isn't out. that your people? No. No. You're, he's not. Are nothing. you fat? No, I'm not. He's like, I'm me, find me. <laughs> <laughs> I play football, so, was, so that was it. I just was like. So, anyways, we got off the phone with the. To me, we got off the phone like, okay, so we're. We cleared the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we will resume. Yes. Okay. Because I am a redemptive person, by the way. Yes. So like some of it is my glutton for punishment, but some of it is like, I really believe the best in people. Yeah. Yeah, and like, sure. we all have missteps. So the same way that like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have hung up the phone. Mm-hmm. I'm asking for us to have a conversation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the next day I don't hear from him all day. Mm hmm. This is my real love scenario. Okay. okay. Y'all are going to be like, I told you she was crazy. So. <laughs> oh, I need to get prepared. What you so I texted say? him and was like, hey, did I, did I not hear from you today because you were busy or because you were like questioning whether or not you should hit me? Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh man, it's just been a crazy day. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just been so much going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let me just say this. My homegirl is a gynecologist. And one time I called her and she answered the phone and said, hey, I'm elbows deep in a uterus. Can I call you back? So I don't ever want to hear nobody (laughs) tell me who cares about me. Like, yo, I was too busy. Mm -hmm. Like, and we got text and DM and all the things. Now, did you forget? That happens, right? Like, happens to me. Oh my God, I kept saying, I kept telling myself that I was, that I need to hit you. And I just kept getting pulled into, I I apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. I was just so busy, you know what I'm saying, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought about that, y'all. And I wanted to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't okay with that because I feel like if you know that you exactly like you said yesterday, like played yourself and, you know, you actually acted out of pocket and you ruined the opportunity for this. Then to me, I feel like this second chance should be treated with with preciousness. And so if you're not going to hit me all day the next day and then say it's because you're busy and not even be like you you up now or or anything like that, there's no preciousness there. And so I thought about it. And I was like, am I going to sound like a crazy bitch? Mm. Maybe. And then I text and I say, you know what? Actually, it's fine. Like if if we were really starting back again, which is what I thought was happening, then I would have expected to hear from you. But clearly I had a different. Mm -hmm. indication of what last night's conversation was and so it's all good like I'll catch you in the mix he hits me back and says okay this is a lot and I said perhaps (laughs) perhaps and he said I'll call you later and I have never heard from him since yeah Mm, yeah, you made the right decision but he said I'll call you later and I have never heard from him since yeah Mm. so I made the right decision Yes. yes 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 But did I sound like a crazy bitch? I don't think you sounded like a crazy bitch. I think that if I was, if you were writing into the show and you wrote that whole thing in, yeah, tell me. I would have said maybe three interactions ago that it was time to be done with it. 
It was even even like the like the redemptive thing. I appreciate. But it, when you were talking about this, it made it made me think about a guy I was dating very briefly, and we got on the topic of having a child who is trans, and they learn this when they're very young. I was I, I watched Jody Patterson's story with her yeah, with her daughter hey, with her yes with her her son. Check her out on my podcast, Small Doses. She's amazing, <laughs> and I was so inspired by this, and I had just watched it. So I'm telling him about it, and I'm excited. like, excited. Yes, I'm inspired. like, this is like. And then it just brings up the conversation like what would you know if this were you like how do you think you would handle it as a parent and his reaction told me I cannot proceed I cannot go past go he can have his feelings about it which as you can imagine he's like I would not be okay with it like my child cannot my son would never he could I would be this he would have to leave the my way house that folks be Okay. Yes. So, so with that said, fundamentally, we were not on the same page. Yes. And so, when you have found that out specifically around Palestine, because I think he was giving off the, per- he was giving enough clues that he did not feel the way that I will say this: when we had our redemptive convo, mm-hmm. he was like, "You were right mm-hmm. about that," and I, and thank you for inspiring me to actually get in the weeds, okay. and I, and now I understand. Got it. And being that that's been so many people's story, mm-hmm. right? Like I just had somebody DM me the other day. Like when you said on October 7th, what you said, I was so angry with you. Like I, I felt like you had betrayed me. And, yeah. you know, for three weeks I was just like, Amanda Seals on some BS. And then mm-hmm. I had to check myself. There's someone in their, in my DMs. They said, I, they said they checked themselves because they were like, yeah. You literally agree with her on like everything else. So like maybe it's worth researching. And they said that they literally committed themselves to research for an hour. And with an hour, we're like, oh, Oh. so that's part of why I was like, but how he was handling it was just, that was the real deal. It was too much. much. Like like you could say like, even like, oh, you're, you at it early. It's like, why even be honest though? Yes. I think that, um, There's so, okay. So I'm a public figure and that adds a whole other thing yeah. to like my just life, mm-hmm. right? Because like I'm, I have to worry about my world mm-hmm. and then I'm worrying about the world and then I'm worrying about how the world is worrying about my world. Mm. That's, That's a, a whole lot. other thing. That's a lot. And so like dating is like a weird thing that I don't necessarily have insight into because it's like, it's not just about if someone has the m- enough money or... To feel to feel comfortable being with me. Yeah. It's not just about if someone has the like intellect, et cetera, or the positioning. So like this was somebody who seemed like a possibility because they had like they had an edu like the education level, like yeah. they had like the yeah. mm-hmm. the um esta- they were established in their career, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And that just feels like it's such a small bucket. Yeah. Because it is. Right. Yeah. So I think I was still I was trying to like uh, yeah. come on <laughs> you're so close trying to make please. it work yes please yeah. Yeah. yeah and it just but i don't i think there's just like you said like there were just so there were just flags for f- fuck all of that mm-hmm. from the beginning when you say so you gotta you got a house but i gotta sit at the marriott nigga yeah like yes because yeah. you should you i'm sorry you should oh. want oh, you cool. should want to and stay you know what's at so the marriott whack about that <laughs> You would not have stayed at the Marriott if you had got your ass here and had a great yeah. dinner. Don't tell them nothing. Don't tell them nothing. I just, I, you know, I have to because so many of us deserve this. Mm-hmm. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. And just show up. Just shut up and show up. Shut up. That should be a like, t-shirt. Shut up and show it's up. It's so real. <laughs> like, you don't need to, like, you're, all of your ego is so in the way. Yeah. And, like, what's the goal? Mm-hmm. What, I don't even know what the goal is for some of these men anymore. I don't, it used to be pussy. And now it's clearly not. It's not that either. Because the amount of shit they're doing to not get pussy is beyond my scope of comprehension. Well, maybe they don't know how to. But how? That, that. No, these the are men that I know that. They had to have They're getting, it. I know people's whose pussies they've been in. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know saying. some of the pussies they've gotten. I'm just like, so, I, I, you know, it's it's a very kind of like, where do we go from here? Well, my perspective on it is I don't mind you giving the extra chances. Okay. I don't think there was a lot at stake. Like, he wasn't in person. It wasn't like y'all were having sex or anything like yeah. that. It was just a few conversations that were exchanged. So even a second chance is just... An additional Another conversation. conversation. And then I can see, 
you know, sometimes you get into situations and you may have thought like, dang, I had, I put that person on a short leash and maybe I didn't give them a chance. So then when he came and apologized and said, you know, mm-hmm. after looking it over, you're like, that's a redeeming quality. Maybe some people need time, right? Mm-hmm. Some people need a little time to just digest <laughs> things and figure it out. These are the things I tell that. myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think once you got to the point to where you were done, I think that's fine because I think there's standard things that people have in relationships that we universally say you shouldn't and shouldn't do yeah. like communicate you, trust is a big thing in relationships you should be honest but be i nice. think i be, i think that's yes. why i said that probably through interactions but though. i think so just outside of those yeah. main things everything else is just particular to you and what you like and i think that when it came to you know, the guy that you were talking to, there were certain things just internally for you that just didn't work. So you saying, I'm you know, when I fine. really should have ended it. And this is a lesson that I will carry with myself moving forward. People telling themselves all the time. Yep. Within the first conversation, he referred to himself as an asshole. But I'm a nice asshole. Interesting. And then he like told a story where he was mean to some, like he was mean to someone he was dating. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that was mean. And he was like, well, we're, you know, we're friends now. So like we cleared it up. And I was like, yeah, but like that was mean. Yes. And that is actually when I should have been like, Amanda, this isn't for you. Was he somebody who's known you for a long time or was he more somebody who knew, I guess, your persona or saw you publicly and that was how you guys came to know each other? Because I wonder if he we said that thinking that he was somehow relating to you or no he somehow. wasn't saying that to relate to me mm-hmm. like he was just we were on a panel together okay at an event and um i mean i think that i i think that he was maybe relating to like you mean like by him calling himself an asshole like oh you're like, an I'm asshole a nice too asshole i think he may have thought that like you understand right like just based off of the persona right it's like i you, genuinely you, you, can't you. remember the context gotcha. but you know what's something that's also a weird flag for and i don't i won't call i won't call it necessarily a red flag but it's a weird flag when you're a public person is i'm not just a public person i am a legit artist like i want to shout out my homeboy wilmo Big Wilmo reminded me the other day, he was like, I just want you to remember, because it came up like in his like Facebook reminder thing. He was like, your HBO comedy special came out on this day, five years ago. You have been working at the highest level Mm -hmm. for 30 years. Like you started on Nickelodeon. Like you've been working at the highest level for 30 years. He was like, that's not a common thing that people have done. And i I've never thought of it that way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God damn, I am an icon. Absolutely. And I have a breath of work. Yes. So when someone is trying to holler at me and it's like, yeah, I don't want to learn about you or your work. Like, I want to learn about you from you. Like, I don't want to look at your work. That's like a weird flag mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I am so, I am an artist. I've lived through my yes. work. Yes. Mm-hmm. So for you to not want to explore that that's not my ego that makes you want to know my work. Like right. that's my heart. Yes, yes, yes. And my th- art is my heart. It is because you are an artist that it is very different because I have the perspective of, I don't want, I don't want you to learn me from that, but I'm also not an artist, right? Like I have a corporate nine to five outside of right. this. Don't want you to learn me through that because no. that's just business as paper. That's like, no. yes. But when you are an artist, it is, it is a part of your fabric. It is, it yes. is a part of who you are. But some people have that balance of like, Oh, if I'm talking to somebody like you, I can't approach you like a fan. You know but you I mean? don't have to be a fan, but you do have to be a fan. Yes, you have to be a fan. <laughs> yes, it's, you do have to be a fan. Not like not who's the coolest cool. celebrity you met. Yeah, like I don't mean a <laughs> fan like, you know, you're going to interview me at dinner. Yeah. But you best believe I'm going I'm to be my nigga's biggest fan. Hmm. Word. If you ever run into my ex, ask that, ask about me. Yeah. I am his biggest fan. I will sit here today and tell you that's one of the most talented producers on this earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He an asshole and he ain't shit. <laughs> but on an MP. But he's talented. Yes. But that man is gifted as fuck, mm-hmm. you know, and I will never take that from him. Yeah. That man is a skilled, gifted audio engineer. Mm-hmm. Is that part of the frustration when it comes to the relationship too? It's like I see the potential there. That's not even potential. That is actual that's actual well, how that can translate into providing more for you i guess how you can take that talent 
Because some people have the talent and ability. Well, I was just looking at him like, it. why aren't you? Do- Fuck me. Like, why aren't you doing this for you? Yeah. Like, there would be times where he's playing beats in the house. I'm com- I come in the room like, I remember crying one time because I was like, I, I don't know why the world, like, I wish the world could hear your music. Like, you're so good. Yeah. Like, you're so fucking good. Like, he did some of the music for my documentary and then we broke up and he dropped the fucking ball and left and left me hanging mm. and quit in the middle of it. And I was left with having to learn how to line up the shit. Like I had to learn a whole new skill because of this nigga. And I just want to shout out my other homeboy, Willard Hill, who swooped in mm-hmm. and actually helped me complete the music yeah. because artists don't leave artists hanging. Mm. And that's why he will never be truly successful because you can have all the skill in the world, but if you don't have the heart in your art, it will never actually win. Mm. And I don't care what kind of breakup we had. You don't leave my shit hanging right. because that's your art. It's your art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Like You don't want that out there. You feel me? Like, it wouldn't yeah. feel good in your in your heart like, like, to just leave that unfinished. Yeah, yeah. like I there's, sure. I don't care what, you know, like, and so, yeah. but I would never like take that mm-hmm. from, from him. And I just feel like there's something so pure in like artists creating, you know? And so when you get to meet somebody that does that, mm-hmm. if you don't see that in them, then you actually aren't really approaching them. And you have such the opportunity with someone like myself to know that before you even get to me. Yeah. Mm. You have a cheat code Mm -hmm. to like actually learn me in a real way. So like, why not? Why not explore that? Why not explore that? That, you know, don't, don't, don't tell me about, and I'm not, and that's the thing. It's like, I've had to accept like, Amanda, you had a different experience in this life. Like you are a public figure. Like it's not the same. You can keep trying to act like you in the peanut gallery. Nigga, you not. You not. (laughs) You you not. So what's the correct approach? Like if somebody a PowerPoint presentation, if somebody and money was and like, I'm interested in Amanda. <laughs> do they slide in the DMs? Do they come up to you in person when they see you? Like how should they approach? <laughs> a if, PowerPoint presentation and what? Money and escrow. That's what she said. I had a Ghanaian <laughs> driver who picked me up from the airport, and I don't know how we got in this we conversation. Oh, she played too much. We got to call it a PowerPoint. <laughs> So slide one shows you uh, where I was As born. You can see. I grew up in a two parent uh, household. Um, like this is what I this is what I would like for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like on slide ten, we get to the future. This is the other thing too. And tell me if, how you feel about this real love scenario. Scenario. We Amanda's got to do the theme song. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll pull the money together. We'll, we'll, we'll start a GoFundMe. Uh, pro bono. Pro okay, bono. That's, a, that's on the mic. It's on the camera. On the camera. Yeah, yeah. You, you heard it. Okay. Um, I was the first. You like... were the first and the first second. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, at this point in my life, I'm not interested in people who are approaching me casually. Like. I'm not saying like I like low key like you need to be pressed. Mm-hmm. Mm. What does that look like? Like that looks like consistency okay. and intentionalism. Mm-hmm. That looks like I want to guess if you like me. I want to know you like me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're already arriving that. liking me. Yeah, you're arriving liking me. Yes, right. Like we're not doing a like you're gonna figure out if you love me. Mm-hmm. But you're already arriving with like. Yeah. Because you've seen how I move in the world. You've already observed. Mm-hmm. You've already done your your Instagram forensic specialist. Right? <laughs> yes. Like, you ran it down. Yeah, well. you NCSI'd my, my, <laughs> my damn Instagram. Like, you already see what it is. Yeah. You've already, like, said, like, that's the type of, you know, woman I, you know, I would like to entertain. And I say this because a revolutionary woman's... Will, I say this because a revolutionary woman's love will not be won passively. Ooh, mm. baby. Like, I don't exist in this world passively. So do not come at me passively. Mm. And don't give me another task. Mm. <laughs> Please. What's your cash app so I can send you a little offer <laughs> real quick? <laughs> like, don't add to my tasks. You Ooh. know, like, our interaction should be a relief. Yes. You know, when they say be there, be his peace, be my peace. Be my peace, baby. Yeah. I will be your peace. Yes. All I want is to be a nigga piece. Oh. Please. <laughs> Dre, high five her do? for me. I'm too far away. <laughs> Get it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Like, please. I'm a peaceful nigga, baby. Okay? Mm-hmm. What? What? Can, can, I'm a part of what can we watch on the couch click? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the click I'm in. Yes. Can what we candles? sit on the couch? 
You want kettle or butter? Can we share? <laughs> yeah. Right. Can yeah. we share the blanket? Mm-hmm. Mm. Can we put our feet together? Yes. Let's watch another one. <laughs> Let's, let's <laughs> cuddle. Do you want to stop? No. Mm-hmm. Like part of the reason me and stay together so long is because we had an incredibly extensive watch habit. Mm. <laughs> like one thing about us that we got right was niggas know how to watch a show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, shout out to the Peaky fucking blinders. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that nigga would be down to watch. Like when we started Peaky Blinders, it was like we would watch that shit on the plane, like whatever. Mm. Like he was down for that. Yeah. But I think that that's something I've had to just become very honest with myself and not like shade myself for Mm -hmm. like, no, like you, you show up ready. Yeah. So show up ready. I'm not saying you're showing up to live with me or to be like in a, I'm not even saying we're showing up to claim each other, Yeah. Yeah. but show up with intention Mm -hmm. and on a basic level, show up, show up knowing how to treat me. Yes. You know, that's why when homie was like, I will come to L.A. and take you out because that's what you deserve. I'm like, correct. That is Mm -hmm. right. And I will be here. And I bought a dress for that outing. Damn. I returned it. Okay, fair fair enough. I do have a date dress. I have a look for the for the first date. I the next one. Yes. Okay, good. Some nigga going to end up taking me out on a date. Somebody. It's going to happen. happen. I want you to keep that hope because Um, it's going to happen. And let me tell you, that dress is a motherfucking problem. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It is. I mean, I'm just saying, um, I'm an in shape kind of gal. And Mm -hmm. it's together. It's going to do the things. But I just think that that's something. These are like things I've had to like be honest with myself about, right? Like I have really good homeboys, and I was telling my homeboy the story mm-hmm. of the of the of the the redemption conversation yes. yeah. and everything. And when I told him that he said that was a lot, he was like, "So, this is my homeboy who's French." Shout to Laurent. He was like, "So it's a lot, okay? Like sometimes you are a lot." So <laughs> he was like, "I mean, that's part of you. Like that's what someone is getting." Mm-hmm. And they are going to get a lot like for them as well, like in a good way. Like if you are a lot person, sometimes like it's like that is part of like what makes you such a great person. Like you are that. Oh, let's kill that. We got the Florida one on, on at part one. <laughs> yeah, we did. Amazing French on part two. She, she do a you good are British consistent. One too. This is why she needs consistency too. because she's consistent. That's actually very true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm. I've had to be consistent because I've been an only child, and I've been like alone mm-hmm. car- chart charting this course for so long yeah so i mean we've been doing my podcast small doses for six years like mm-hmm. we haven't missed a week love it like it's because consistency in a relationship is caring yeah yeah for mm-hmm. sure it is you it's, know and is. a lot of women actually don't want a lot of women, I'm not saying all of us, but a lot of women don't need your money. We need security and consistency is is tied up in security. Yes, it is. Right? Like there is something, it's reliability. Mm-hmm. That's it exactly what I was to say. Them. It's protection, yeah. not in the physical sense, but in the emotional sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Consistency protects your feelings. Mm-hmm. So that's why when a nigga don't call you for nine fucking hours. Ta- tell him. His response should be, hey, my bad. Mm-hmm. I, I can know. see how that could make you well, he wasn't easy. serious about you. So that's yeah, why he didn't do it. that. That's why he didn't do it. It's, it's true. It's very true. It's Hence, we are, well, for other reasons too, because God rest his soul, but prior to That his, would be a reason why you That would talking. be a primary reason, yeah. but it ended yeah. prior to that, you know, because he, he just wasn't. Why are you trying to make me laugh about something that's not funny? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Apologize. Like, I'm Let's... a comic. I will laugh about dark shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, yeah. Uh, if if, mm. if you aren't consistent, you, you won't. Be consistent. If you're not consistent in the early phases, in the dating phases, and to me where it should be easier to be consistent. Consistency should be a part of your character. It should have nothing to do with me. You're right. consistent in paying your bills every month. Mm-hmm. Or are you? Or or are you? But I, that's when, when things start off with games and being weird. Strategy. It's just, it's not. Yeah. It, like when I met my wife, there wasn't games. There there were things we need to work on, yes, but I didn't have to guess if she liked me or if she was committed to me or if she wanted to spend every moment with me. That wasn't a guess. But if you're in the mo- in the beginning parts and you're guessing about those things, it's like. That's but I will I mean. tell you this, and I know that this isn't, of course, like everybody, but a lot of the societal setup of dating ends up requiring you to do that because so many are mm programmed mm. to feel like anything other than that is you being extra or yep. you being needy it's or a lot you being a lot you know mm-hmm. and um 
as opposed to you just being deliberate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women we're told like, don't do that. Don't like, do no, it. you got to really act on, you got to act right. like, et cetera. Right. And then men will tell you like, yeah, you got to do that. Don't yeah. let these niggas think that you like them off top. Mm -hmm. so everybody playing games everybody's playing games and so i'm someone who's <laughs> never i've never played games so Me that's either. also like i said earlier like that's why you ain't with nobody because i'm not playing the game like i'm even in like the business of hollywood i realized that i needed to find a different course mm -hmm. because i don't want to play the game, the game. Yeah. Yep. and it's not like i can change the can't game change the game yep so yeah. like create your own space so, you know, and then and then the lesbians watching are like, create your own space. And I'm like, <laughs> I just don't, I don't, I don't want titties don't, on my titties. I'm so sorry. Uh, I can't, I, I can't do that. about the business side of things. That, I am like <laughs> you. Like, I feel no, like. No, because all the lesbians be in my, like, DMs, like, come over to this side. They waiting. And they I'm waiting like, now. it's not that easy. Like, I just, I, I, I can't. I don't. If I could, I probably would. I don't want to eat pussy and I don't. <laughs> it's just that simple. I don't want a woman to eat my pussy. I just don't. <laughs> Lord, where was and I that's about to fine. say? I forgot it that fast. You, <laughs> Ooh, oh no, about um the games. Like I feel like we're from a generation where it's like I remember the press thing was a thing. Like if you weren't outside my house, if you weren't like making sure you got to the phone by a certain time to call me before I couldn't take calls because it was nine o'clock. Like I came from that tribe where you wrote the letters, you brought the flowers, you did you did all the extra stuff. And because the games have been so prevalent today, like the way that I hold on to hope, because I don't ask you that question, but the way I hold on to hope is to go back to the things that were like that, like nostalgic music where like they are begging. I literally made a playlist called Black Love Signed Him. It's and like, it is oh, filled with Josie. songs of men that are like, baby, please. Baby, I love you, girl. I love you, baby. Literally. And I listen to that when I'm baby, feeling. Baby, I okay. will cry for you tonight. <laughs> Before I let you go, can I get a kiss goodnight? You just bag it. Yes. D listen, they just wanted to know your name. Mm -hmm. Can we talk for, for a, a minute? minute. For a minute. Girl, I want to know. Yeah, but don't tell me your name, name baby. <laughs> Demanding. That, the entire oh. playlist is like that. So when I'm feeling like, I don't know how this is going to work out, I go to that. Because I'm like, these men, they exist. I know they exist. They, they exist. Well, you know what the issue is? They exist. Is that the man who's way below your standards or way below, you know, where you are with things, mm -hmm. he's intimidated by you. No, he's not. And let me tell you. He he's is. Not, no, he's not. Because he's in my DMs. He's Them niggas are not intimidated. They're actually very confident. In, in a relationship, they wouldn't be able to be in a relationship with you. Fair. And then the guys who are at where the level, let's say career, all that stuff like that, they're desired by so many, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes those men- Can I add another caveat for that? Yes. They also have all of those things, but they're smart men, dumb men. Yes. They I don't have the one. emotional intelligence to be with someone who is on their intellectual level. But sometimes when they're in that position of being highly desired, it's almost like you got to court me. Mm. I know. And show me that you are worth my time because now the like there is that that standard that you describe mm -hmm. is no longer mm -hmm. right. So you have that in between of that yeah. the lower dude and the top dude, and they see the so many of those dudes below that they're like, I'm the catch. Yeah, so I ain't we got a court. Catch. I ain't got a court. <laughs> oh, we, we we going to the I'm catch. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> we not go. Are we going there? You want to go there? <laughs> Here's what my thing is about. <laughs> we Let going just, there. Well, not even. Like, uh, this thing about courting is, I think that's like a, that term itself ends up really being attached to like this old fashioned idea of acquiring property. Um, when ultimately it's just, I want to show you mm -hmm. who I am. And I want the opportunity to learn who you are at the same time. Yes. Yep. That to me is what it should be. Yes. And like, I'm somebody that it's not a money thing, mm -hmm. but for a lot of men, it is Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, they need that. I, I need don't need that. that. I'm so serious that I don't need that, but they need that. And so since y'all need that, you better have that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's for you. Not to for feel me. secure yes. and good yeah. about you yourself need in this that. relationship. So fuck it. Then let's just do that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got, 50 racks in escrow before we even start. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. because you need that. Do that for you because I would hate for for this to get ruined off of something that you already knew you needed off rip. Like, I mean, I just, this shit is so complicated and it's so difficult. It's not simple. And we've no. also been tricked to think it is. Like, yeah. why can't y'all just get together? Because it's not that simple. we are complex computers. Yep. We don't even know our own programming. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people have not downloaded a new iOS for a long I was about to time. Say. My operating system is top notch. I think in theory it's simple, but in application it's very difficult. Yep. Whatever. That's so when people say it's simple, they think like, oh, all you gotta do is do this. And yeah, you could say all you, you gotta know what's do simple? is do that. But putting a dick that. in a pussy is simple. Everything beyond and even that requires a certain level of wetness, if we're being honest. It does. Yes, so it does. you know It needs some processing. There, it needs some processing. Can, oh, sure. I'm, can we prime? <laughs> <laughs> can we Amazon Prime? <laughs> like, you know, moistness is preferred. I'm just saying, <laughs> all of this shit, as I've gotten older, I've actually just changed even the way that I, because people ask me for advice all the time, and I've just even changed the way I deliver advice because I think that I was coming from a, the school of the way so many others give advice, which is these generalities. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's like, you have to understand you to even be able to take advice. Mm. Say that again. Mm. So yeah. a lot of us are really just asking for permission. We're not even asking for advice. We're That's asking for permission to do the thing that we already know Absolutely. that we're going to do. Very true. Right? Or we're asking for affirmation, mm -hmm. for affirming. Yeah. Like, I'm asking y'all, like, am I a crazy bitch? Right? <laughs> and... I mean, whatever y'all say, I still think I am. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> because if I'm saying that, I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. learn. But I, I just, I just feel like we're, we're getting better at talking. And I do think that is really like, we're getting better on these spaces. I think some podcasts need to actually go to hell. Agreed. Yes. Because agree. they're not having real conversations from a solution space or a love space. Yeah. It really is from an ego space, yeah. which is not helpful to anybody, mm -hmm. but we have to get, we have to continue to get back to talking. Like even on my radio show, I do like a word of the day. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they may think that's perfunctory, but the reason why is because I'm like, we need more words. That's a good word. Perfunctory. 10 points for Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> we need more words to describe. Like one of the things I can tell you. So, so many people I know in my life that were very close to me only know three words, happy, three feelings, happy, sad, mad. Mm. If that's the extent of your emotional vocabulary, what are we really going to be able to do? Not because much. even if I'm just slightly annoyed, you think I'm mad. So you're responding to that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just miffed. Yeah. <laughs> Let it go. You it's, know what I'm saying? It's then it's like, okay, happy. Well, happy has like a lot of phases. And if I'm not giving you this, that doesn't mean I'm not still pleased. Yeah. Yeah. They see it as a switch versus like a spectrum. Mm -hmm. You need the spectrum you do. to examine yourself, to know how to respond to things, et cetera. So that's when we, when we see mindfulness being taught in children, it's so beautiful because it's giving them language to exist in a complex world. Your feelings are as complex as this world. And if you can't identify them, then it's always going to be overwhelming for you. And now you're trying to be in someone else's world. How is that going to work? How? You know, so like I love seeing men these days who are excited about learning the adventure of themselves, like the yeah. emotional journey of themselves. Like I think that if more men, specifically black men saw that as like the true warrior effort, mm -hmm. like we would be in such a different place as a society of black people in our okay. families, in our family structures. If so many more black men saw um, providing as something more than just monetary yeah. Uh, support and security but like providing emotional support and security in your home like that is so much of what we need for like the black family structure to grow and I think that people are like no we need marriage etc and it's like listen some people just aren't compatible 
mentally and emotionally, but they were physically. And so they made a person, but that doesn't mean you can't still have compatibility as parents. Yes. Right. And creating an emotionally secure place. I can tell you that at 42, I'm in therapy and I'm trying to figure my shit out. Cause I didn't have two people that could that compatib- committed to do that. Yeah. Do it for you. Yeah. I will. 1000%. Mm-hmm. You don't got to stay with the nigga. But stay with the parenting. Yes, work with them. That was my experience. My parents were divorced ever since I could remember. But always were cordial, great, never had any issue. So when I hear people say, like, we're staying together for the kids, but it's, like, super unhealthy, I'm like, have you ever talked to a kid who grew up in that unhealthy environment with I both have. of the parents there? They would tell yeah. you, like, nah, I'm good. Y'all can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y'all can go. Because you can go. feel all of that. Yeah, yeah. My ex's that. kids were like, we were so happy when they sat us down and said, we're getting divorced. We were like, great good <laughs> finally we are done we're finally glad y'all got here because it was it was it was rough for them for a long time yeah yeah. well listen speaking of advice mm-hmm. and small doses okay we got a quick little segment to mm-hmm. wrap things up mm-hmm. small doses of dating advice there we go i don't know if i'm even you're, you're qualified. qualified you're, you're one qualified. of the brightest minds in the world, oh, literally, literally. I've actually learned right words there. from in you. In the world. In the world. International. So this is light work. This is light work. <laughs> All right. So here's the scenario. Two people, they're really good for each other, like on paper. Very like matter of fact, this works out. You went here. We do that. But the sex isn't great. Should they try to stick it through? Maybe explore non-monogamy? Or is the sex just a deal breaker and they should let it go? I mean, how how deep into this are they? Like a couple years. Have they talked about this? Yeah, they mm-hmm. just, it's a lack of attraction. It's just really not there. They're attracted on everything they but the like physical tried piece. It all. Yes. You like it, I love it. I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, because now we're in this whole world of like, well, what does is, what is partnership really look like, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like they might decide, like, you know what? We don't need that. We don't need that. Mm-hmm but I want to get it from somewhere else. And if you're okay with that and I'm okay with that, then so fucking be it. But like, sometimes it's, I feel like, no, like I, I do need that. Or sometimes you try and convince yourself that you don't really Mm. need that. Mm. And it's like, if you got to convince yourself that you're not you, then I don't know if that's really sustainable or that's like the most healthiest situation. I agree. But I think that we are in a society that does allow for a lot more versatility Mm -hmm. in what partnership looks like and that's a conversation away i agree (laughs) all right next one your homeboy we talked about about having really good friends Mm -hmm. he does not like your man he admits this after y'all in a relationship he never says anything while you're dating but y'all get together and he's like you know i really don't like it and he starts to make it obvious like when y'all you're around him with your dude how do you handle it he don't come around my dude no more. Yeah, it's just you can't do that. Yeah, we still friends, but you just I don't bring you around. Okay, easy enough. All right, next. But one. also, like, why don't you like my nigga? Because Dre has said that we don't listen to our homeboys. <laughs> yeah. So also, also why like, do you why you don't like him? <laughs> like, why you tell me this right here? Okay. But I feel like as your homeboy, you gotta be respectful. You know, a certain level of respect. Yeah, you you can't. I, I even feel like it's weird to just outright say that. Maybe you just say like it's just certain things that or he did this. Well, also, I don't like how he treats you when it comes. Some of the things you told me makes me feel uneasy about him. But just to like flat out say that is like. But we're our camera. Also, don't be telling me everything bad about your person. Ah. Everything bad about your person, and then you surprise when I don't like them. Right, that's true. true. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. I hate that. Give me, give me the, a mixture. You telling yeah, me everything tell me that's the, wrong, the gamut, <laughs> good and the bad. You come yes. to me every time something wrong, and then you like you don't like them now. <laughs> no, I don't like no. them. I don't understand why you do. Right? Why do you like, like them? <laughs> All right, I feel like I already know what you're gonna say on this one, but you're in therapy, you yourself, but your partner won't go because they don't think they need it. Oh, at this point, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. Everybody needs it. You need it, you need it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't need it in the same way. Like some therapy is talk therapy. Then mm-hmm. there's Reiki. There's mm-hmm. float therapy. I mean, there's a myriad of ways. But I, at this point, feel like you can't be a conscious person in this world and not be constantly like 
taking care of your brain. Mm -hmm. It's like being a basketball player and not going, not working out, not going to the gym, yeah. not, not watching tape. massage. Not, mm -hmm. no, no, I don't even mean that. I mean, like you have to, when you're a basketball player, like you have to take the care of your care, body. Yeah. yeah. Like you have to get massage. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the whirlpool. Mm -hmm. you, right. may, you may need to get, you know, you need to ice. Like this mm -hmm. is just upkeep. Yeah. It's just maintenance. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I would love to meet somebody who's in the maintenance level of their healing. Mm -hmm. You know, who already has identified like, yeah. They've gone and done the deep work. The deep root work. Mm -hmm. And they may be in a new phase of, you know, but they they identify like, yes, this is, this is the phases. But ultimately, it's like, I don't know that I have met enough men in a romantic space. Let me not say I don't know. I have not met enough men in a romantic space that like women. They like pussy, mm -hmm. but they don't like women. They don't. They just tolerate them. Yeah. Like they don't mm -hmm. think we're cool. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't think we're on their level. Like they don't see joy in us. Like they don't see our uniqueness as additive to their individualism. Like, yeah. and so they don't have like a inherent kindness that they extend to us mm. and i feel like that's been something that a lot of my female friends have like extended my homeboys are men who i've never felt like i wasn't equal to and then when i did it was like oh well we're not you know what i'm saying but they have always regarded me as a full person yeah. and like shared in my space. Right. So I I've, I've, I've had men who are like, I don't want my girl to be my friend. My girl is my girl. Yeah. That's common. Uh, that's that really even... common. My girl is my girl. My friends are my friends. That's very common. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really just like, it's it there's just a kindness that I think a lot of men don't have for women. And I've experienced it in a real way. Like, why are you talking to me that way? Yeah. You know, like why are you treat like why why you would never treat your niggas like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like ever. You would never treat your niggas like this. Why are you treating me this way? That's why so do you think this is an appropriate interaction? You know, like stuff like that is the part that makes me not as hopeful. Yeah, because I don't think society is interested in nurturing that. And I want, at the very least, our black community to be to say, well, them crackers over there may not be about that, but we are. We have to be. We have to be. Mm -hmm. We have to I be. I hate hearing that, man. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very disappointing. I, I feel like I've had a balance. I feel definitely feel like I've had a balance. I've experienced that wholeheartedly where it's like, wow, you just want it for what it can do for you not because you feel it brings joy or just camaraderie and love and respect but I've also thankfully friends and men that I've dated and I'm thankful for the men specifically that I dated because they helped me understand my worth it they at least introduced it to me so that I can start exploring it for myself mm -hmm. but then also like giving me that hope that like oh yeah y'all might be a small group. I would say my first boyfriend ever mm -hmm. was that Okay. That's what's allowed for even, you know what I'm Just saying? Like my first boyfriend, Marquis, like I was treated with respect, it, with respect. I was treated mm -hmm. with kindness. Yep. Like I was never pressured, mm -hmm. you know, or pushed to do anything. Yep. Um, you look so devastated. I'm, it just doesn't make any sense. Cause I mean, if you talk to men who are truly married and happy, they'll tell you that it is an amazing thing when you mm -hmm. find the right person. Mm -hmm. But then I look at the guys that maybe you're talking about and it's there for them. But it seems like they don't want to have the accountability and the responsibility that it takes to be in a relationship. Well, yeah, because the right person means that you're going to have to like do, do stuff, stuff. Do stuff. Yeah. and be a, yeah, be accountable. Yeah. Like, be like I had someone tell me recently, they were like, "Yeah, like I want to, I'm going to have to leave your company because I don't have the mental health to work at a job I care about." Mm. What? Yeah. Mm. They were like, I, I realized that I need to work somewhere where I don't care about it because 
-hmm. will stress me out working for someone who I actually like care about the work. And I was just like, wow. And I think that can be related to, I'm not even just going to say men, just like people in Mm -hmm. relationships. Like that's part of the whole, like, I don't want to have feelings, you know? Mental health is like the stomach ache of the second grade. When you're trying to get out of school. When you're trying to get out of school. (laughs) Yeah. It's like my my stomach stomach hurts. That's a whole other episode. (laughs) get out and and it's like people use that mental health word just flying around, don't they? Oh, abusing. Abusing it. But, that um, was it. Those are my those are my small doses. Thank you for participating. I appreciate that. We appreciate <laughs> those are your small doses. Those are those are the ones. See, you handled that like a pro. Very well. Like a pro. You know, it's um it's a weird thing to be not a weird thing, but it's actually been an honor to like now be in this place where I've been on the earth long enough and I've been visible long enough where people like trust. Yeah. You know, so I'm I try my best to always be like incredibly thoughtful. Yep. about my responses to things mm-hmm. and um you know just understanding of how many of us don't have sounding boards mm-hmm. and don't have community um and like so like with my patreon like for a long time like my patreon was just like somewhere that i was just like posting like ad free episodes of my podcast yeah. but um I've started treating it as a community Mm -hmm. and it's been really dope to just see how folks are feeling nurtured by that. Like they're telling me like, you know, this chat that we have and, you know, the conversations and the different postings, it's, it's creating more of a dynamic space outside of like this social media shit. Right. And even over there, like, I feel like I'm getting to learn more about how to even be more present in that way. And with the podcast with small doses, you know, I've, I've learned over these years, like small doses has been therapy for me. Yeah. It's it's been therapy for me. I mean, we changed the category, right? Yes, we did. We changed the category (laughs) from comedy to To self-improvement education. Should have been. (laughs) Should have been. (laughs) But I'm in a new cycle, like a new season as a creative and really, um entering like I have I feel like when I did the podcast last time like I was already embracing that like you are in this independent space but Mm -hmm. now it's like really that like where Hollywood is kind of just like make sure I get my health insurance you know but I I really take like my work seriously and I appreciate that people like take me seriously yeah um not you the nigga in the comments who's gonna say I don't but (laughs) not you (laughs) um but I feel like it's it's just like like the work in progress that I am like I've had to do like in front of people Mm -hmm. and like it's been it's it's been a ride yeah. and y'all are on the ride. And I just signed my next book deal this week. Oh, hey. Congratulations. So yes. we on the ride again. <laughs> Let's go. And so yeah, I got to write another book. That's amazing. Well, I'm happy Thank for you. you and proud, even if it doesn't mean much, but very, very proud of you. It's amazing. Don't ever to- let nobody tell you that that don't mean much. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants to be told someone's proud of them. Yeah. Very, very proud of you. Thank very, you. very proud of you. Honored to, to sit with you for a second time. And you can come back whenever you like. Whenever you like. Whenever you like. <laughs> whenever you y'all. like. Please. Can I plug something? I was about to say, please plug away where to find you, all the stuff. Um, You can find me on Instagram at Amanda Seals. You can find me on YouTube at Amanda Seals TV. I do lives uh, on YouTube now where I'm really trying to just expound upon like more like information based t- content. So like my podcast, I feel like it's more it's themed whereas like uh, i'll like pick a headline and be like we're gonna bring somebody on like to talk about this you can also check out the amanda seal show mm-hmm. uh we are every day wherever you get your podcast we're also syndicated in select cities and you can go follow us on youtube and instagram at seals set it and you can catch me on tour so you can go to amandaseals.com catch me on tour i'm in various cities i'm not sure when this is going to air so check out when i'm coming to your city yeah. and you can sign up for my newsletter so that you don't miss out on any of these things that's going on and last but not least you can subscribe to my patreon you can get there at theamandaburst.com or just go to patreon and put in my name um my small doses podcast that airs weekly we will have video episodes of that on my patreon as well as bonus episodes yeah. that i have now started to do on my patreon and all of this is really a part of creating an ecosystem 
that is supported by grassroots and by the people and not by the um, Hollywood system that controls people. And that's mm-hmm. why I get to sit up here with a kefia and say free Palestine. Word. And happy Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> Put the fist up right there. Oh, my God. That was nah, so good. That was awesome. Thank you so much. As you know always. I appreciate you. Yes. As always. Ditto. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> For always coming through. Amanda Seals, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. <laughs>